There are few images from the American Revolution more stuck in the public imagination than rigid lines of British soldiers firing ineffectual volleys at American militiamen hiding behind rocks and trees. Unfortunately, this interpretation is far from the truth. The British Army in 1775 was a professional force, quick to adapt. In the past decades, it had defeated the French Army in Europe and North America, as well as put down a rebellion in Scotland. These conflicts had taught several valuable lessons, which prompted serious reforms in how the British Army fought their battles. The main lesson was that European linear warfare alone was not enough to bring victory in the North American frontier. Europe was filled with vast open fields and its battlefields dominated by cavalry. Infantry fought in dense lines and blocks, just as effective at protecting against cavalry with bayonets as they had been with pikes a century earlier. In North America, there was no cavalry tradition. Little risk of spread out soldiers getting cut down by horsemen. Instead of vast fields, there were dense forests that made coordinating and moving traditional battle lines difficult. In the Seven Years' War, the British Army learned to fight like Native Americans, employing skirmishers to scout and fight in the woods while covering the traditional formations in the fields. Those traditional lines provided the firepower to win a battle, while the light troops provided the maneuverability. In the early 1770s, every British regiment added a company of light infantry trained to move and fight in fast, loose formations. The lights were the counterpoint to the grenadiers, big, tall, elite veterans who also formed a company within each regiment and served as shock troops. Those lights and grenadiers were the ones who made the march to Lexington and Concord and continued to form the core of the British Army throughout the war. By 1778, most British soldiers were fighting as light infantry, with the actual lights and grenadiers separated into elite battalions. The classic British doctrine during the American Revolution revolved around two principles, speed and steel. Against militia, the sight of British bayonets was often enough to force them from the field. Only supported by the more professional Continentals could militia hope to stand. One advantage of linear formations was that more soldiers fit on the field at a time. Even though it meant a larger target, it also meant a heavier volume of fire on the enemy. The Continental Army could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Redcoats in a firefight, so the British would close with the enemy as quickly as possible, using loose formations to move more easily. At around 60 yards, they would fire a volley, then charge with bayonets. This was usually enough to scare the enemy away. So our mental image is backwards. For most of the American Revolution, dense lines of Continentals fired volleys at spread out lines of redcoats, using cover and moving swiftly to outflank their foes. When they were not moving, British soldiers took cover where they could. The order was to tree. The British army won the majority of the battles it fought, but they still lost the war. It was impossible to keep the army equipped across the Atlantic, especially with the threat of the French Navy. The British also failed to destroy the American army, which consistently escaped after every defeat. The two major British defeats, Saratoga and Yorktown, saw the British army engaged, captured at the end, and completely removed from the war. Eventually, the conflict became too costly, and the British had to accept peace. If you want to learn more about the British Army in the American Revolution, come to the American Independence Museum in Exeter, New Hampshire, on July 17th.